for the Robbie legacy, Sheila and Jeremiah Skiba. Thank you so much for being here, first of all. And this is way outside my comfort zone, but uh, so bear with me. But first, I wanted to start with the lighthearted thing as we get into more serious things. So I'm going to play this video. Look, tell her destiny brought you together. Tell her that she is the most beautiful girl you've ever seen in the world. Girls like that stuff. What are you, what are you doing? Josh? I'm writing this down. This is good stuff. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Lou, give me a milk. Chocolate. So I played that video because Rob was just the most joyful, happy person that you will ever know. And so often when we were out in the field um, doing ministry and going to conferences, and we went to South Africa, which was a kiss from the father because we had been through a rough time. And um, he was the only speaker. And we went to several, I think he did six or seven. Uh, in, he did one in Cape Town and one in uh, uh, Pretoria or however you say it anyway and so it was a blessing and we weren't we, we, we went to Amsterdam and Canada and all over Austin we did one a year and Lubbock we did one a year anywhere people would have us we went and he would just say as long as you pay for myself and my wife we'll we'll come we don't charge and all that and so so it was a journey of fun and excitement and so he often said you are my density and to, just like that guy. And so with this, I, I use it because this morning, I, the father told me before the conference, don't prepare, just go. So that's what I did. And when I woke up this morning, I'm like, okay, father, I need something. And this popped in my head. So I asked my son, do you know where that, that clip is? Not thinking he could find it because, you know, it's kind of last minute. He said, yeah. And in two, two minutes, he had it downloaded. So anyway, thank you, Jeremiah. So... Um, I want to just give you a little bit because I feel like family. I've, I've met so many of you, and your stories really meant a lot. And I'm so thankful that they're putting it in writing because I want to remember all these stories. And uh, we kept a lot of emails and things in the in the past before Rob died, just to remember all the fruit and all the all the beautiful souls that connected to us through through his research. So sometimes I had to pinch myself um, because it was so amazing. And then Rob would say, you are my density. So, I mean, destiny. So that's why I shared that. Sometimes I don't connect the dots. Um, Rob often said, I didn't, he often said, I forgot to put my blinker on. So if I do that, I apologize in advance. Okay. But I believe our destiny tonight is for me to give you this message. Um, Rob was amazing. He had his Bible highlighted and annotated when he was 13 years old. Years old. And he was amazing. And because I had prayed for a husband that would love the father more than I loved the father because I knew I'd get somebody that would love me. And so, wow, I got it in abundance. I got it in, I mean, I never imagined it was going to be that full of a gift. But, but that's what he was. He, he like, knew the Bible. And, he, like, a and logging encyclopedia is what he was. He remembered dates. He remembered history. And um, so that was a real blessing. And, and so uh, when we first met we what he what he did was is he took the last part of his bible and he cut it out and he made a little bible and he said i'm going to study the kingdom and uh miracles and i'm just going to highlight one orange and one green and and the reason is because we both in our own walks we, we met at a mission organization and we would take our lunches together but um he was like there's got to be more than this in this christian experience and what we've been taught and so 
That's why he did it. He took the last part of his Bible out and he stapled it together and then he just went through it and, it, and he did orange for kingdom and green for the power or a healing or a, you know, whatever miracle. And so he, we learned pretty fast that it, they went together. So, you know, that, that's a big part of my message tonight that I want to share, just kind of two messages. But um, we are supposed to be bringing the kingdom and we are supposed to be ambassadors of the kingdom and we're supposed to walk in that. And so together we kind of went down that journey. And so he wanted to make it special whenever we got married. So he, he's a real numbers guy. And so we married on 777 at 707. Seven bridesmaids, seven groomsmen. So, you know, he's really big into numbers. And, uh, and looking through the old pictures, I found this, this, it's a yellow rose, and it has a little note on the bottom. He just snuck it in the room after I had said yes. And um, it says, our future is bright. So that's what he said, just a sweet little note. And this is, we'll tie it into something else later. And then we, we, with this kingdom message, I'm trying to connect the dots because just, just bear with me with this because it's all connected, but I'm non-linear. Rob was very linear and I'm not, but um, we wanted to uh, experience the kingdom. And so we had 300 people in one room that we loved. Some of them were sick, some of them had problems, but we believed in, in, in the power. It's not just a lot of talk, it's walking in Yahuwah's power. And so we decided during our wedding, we were gonna invite the guests to come up and get prayer. And we prayed for many of them. We had prayer teams as well. But Rob's own mother got healed. She got healed. She had been given a death sentence of 10 years and, and she's alive today. I mean, she was planting a garden and things right after our wedding. So that, that fruit was really amazing to us to give us. We also had a little, um, had a little thing on each table of a little, little jar of mustard seeds and it says, uh, I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And then I put in bold, nothing will be impossible for you. And Rob believed that. And he really, to back up a little more, we, because we worked together, he heard me pray once at a, one of our chapels. And he often said that's why he decided that to be interested is because that girl knows how to pray. And so I, th I thought that was kind of sweet. And so we, we incorporated that into our wedding. And then we had our first, and this is before we came out of Babylon, we had our first Christmas. And I decided to give him a little small, a new Bible. And I wrote this in there. And, and I almost was going to bring this, these little Bibles I'm talking about, but my, I had too much stuff already, so I didn't bring it. But this was a note that I put in the first gift that I gave, I gave him. And I want to read it to you. This is our heart. I'm trying to show you what our heart was back then, because this is like 2007. Um, Dear Rob, you will do mighty exploits in these last days. It is my honor to give you this new sword. Go raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, multiply food, and transport. And I have a little smiley face. See, see God's power released in your life today and forever. You are an overcomer. You are the body of Jesus in the earth, releasing heaven. The kingdom is at hand. I love you so much. And so that's kind of where our marriage started. We went to Amsterdam, and this is him teaching. And I have, I have pictures of him in every city that he ever, I mean, so many places, so many people. And it was, it was a journey. It was an adventure. I loved it. I, he was a gift to me, too, for 14 years. I mean, high above anything I could have ever expected. So I praise the Father for that. And then time went on, and we were feeling irritated in church, like, we're not learning. It's, you know, it's entertainment, all this singing, it's loud, and, you know, and we both looked at each other and said, let's just stay home. We said, okay. So we called it Church on the Pillow. We would just <laughs> lay in the bed and have church with the radio on, and, and that was our church for a while. And then he, and then he was connected with a, a man and his wife who were studying um, the Torah, and Rob's heart was heavy, and so he asked him, um, well, why don't you come with us? Me and my wife are doing a a, a Torah study at the Christian Bible um, store. It was like a, I don't know, mall, whatever. And he said, a Christian, I mean, a, a Torah study at a Christian bookstore? That's what it was. And uh, he said, yeah. And so he looked at me, and I'm like, yeah, sure. So we went, and uh, it was amazing. It was a portion about Joseph and uh, his brothers, and it was so much fun, and about Tamar, the sister, because when we got home, somebody in the group said that she was uh, part Nephilim, and he was like, no, she couldn't be. And so we went back, and Joshua and looked and saw her name meant upright, so she had to be in the, you know, had to be Hebrew. 
that was part of the journey, finding the Torah, or as he called it, the whole Bible movement. And that was really fun and, and really, really a sweet, sweet a season in our marriage. And like I said, it was, 14, it was a 14 year gift and I am so happy and so blessed that I had that. And then I'm gonna go into uh, when Rob got sick. In August of 2021, he went to take on the world and I always traveled with him, but he told me this time that, that he didn't want me to go and because of and, and quarantining and all that. And he was like, I don't, just, I want you safe. He was worried about my health. So I said, okay, tried to get him to just do Zoom. And he said, no, I have to be there. And I said, okay. So he went and when he came back, he was fine. He was fine. But um, he started coughing and, um, and it kind of kept going on and on and days went by and he, and, and I, you know, we had all, we had all the ivermectin and all the stuff that they, you know, we had all the frontline doctor stuff and we were trying and uh, it, they do it through telemed. So we had called in the prescription and I, and so when, when it kept lingering on and on, I would tell Rob, we need to go somewhere or something because you're not getting any better. You're not able to um, eat and you're not able to drink and you're not able to swallow pills. And I'm like, but he was very stubborn. He was like, no, they're not going to shove a Q-tip up my nose. So he stayed. So I called him and they said, take him to the ER. So I felt like, you know, since they were front line aligned, I thought, okay, because I had been to the hospital many times. My dad had got a pacemaker there. They had, they had excellent em emergency care in, in the years past. And so I didn't think anything of it. And I took them and, um, and it was a nightmare really. And I'm not going to go into the details because I've spent the last year and a half of my life working on this book, the protocol that kills, I guess what was up there. And, um, I'm just going to give you a few a few nuggets of what I've gotten from this, and I apologize. This is I'm so nervous. Um, I'm trying to make it flow, but uh, no, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And at that conference, he never got to give his very last uh, presentation that he prepared. And you know, he had he always had good slides. He had videos to go with it, and he always showed me before, and then we kind of tweaked it or maybe take that out, and so. It was so good. I thought it was so amazing that as soon as he got in the car, I said, how did the last one go? And he goes, I didn't give it. And I said, why not? He goes, it was hijacked or something like that. And I was like, well, what do you mean? And he was like, well, there was something going on. I really didn't know until I came tonight that there was some lady manifesting a something. And they just, Rob just said, look, um, do y'all want me to speak? But I think maybe y'all need to minister to the lady. So that's what they did. And he never gave his speech. Um, wow. I don't even know if I'm supposed to be doing this. The Holy Spirit hijacked the service tonight. <laughs> and that's, can't ask for anything better than that. <laughs> Before coming here, oh, those of you who attended Friday night, I told you that I felt like the Spirit was telling me my people need healing. And that's what this take on the world is all about. You've heard many speakers throughout this weekend talk about physical healing, emotional healing, you know, all of it, all the above. We saw a whole lot of spiritual healing up here. And you know, guys, this, this presentation that I prepared here, I just think is cool. I, I don't think, I don't know, I really don't know if I should do it. Um, I know some people are expecting, well, let me ask you, should I do it or not? Because I, there's more, there may be more of that that is needed than this, I guess is what I'm saying. And I, I don't want to interrupt that. If, if, if the, the spirit is still moving and people still need deliverance, then that's way more important than talking about aliens and, revelation whatever I'm going to talk about. Hey, I'm conflicted. I really am. I truly am because that was amazing. That was fantastic. And if that needs to continue, then we need to continue that. So you guys tell me. Anybody else that needs healing, please come up here. Any prayer partners, please come up here. But, um, it was called Revelation 12 and the Nuremberg Connection. So I find that very interesting. Um, I don't know if he got sick there or, sick, you know, but I can't, I, I don't live in shoulda, woulda, coulda, and I try not to let my mind go there because destiny, like that, like that thing that I played the very first thing, that's kind of the season of the, or, or the reason for all of this. And that's kind of, I guess why the father gave me that word today. So it was 40 days. He lived 40 days in the hospital and it was during the fall feast which, you know, I never in a million years thought I was going to lose them, ever. And so, 
and it kept falling on special days and people say now's the time you know because and, and all the details are in the book i didn't hold anything back so early early on like the day two of him being there because I, I could talk to him but i couldn't see him they, they locked me out for 21 days so and we were talking and we were texting and all those are in the book i mean everything everything is in the book um i didn't think there were i i, I kind of had a hesitation leaving him there but i felt like he could he was strong enough to hold his own and he needed oxygen because and that's what i forgot to tell you his, his oxygen level got down to 70 and they told me take him to the er the, the frontline american telemed people so that's why i did it and uh, I felt a little uneasy because the only thing they wanted me to uh, answer for his medical history was, was he vaccinated? And I said, no. I'm like, since when does that matter? I mean, really? So uh, they wheeled him off, literally escorted me out. And I'm not going to go into the details of that, but it was, it was excruciating. And I thought they were going to settle him in and then let me in. But no, they had a plan, and they had a plan to keep me out for 21 days. But I, I still kept holding on to faith, and I, I still kept believing that he was going to make a way. And I, uh, I, I gathered a team of people together, doctors, uh, nurses. Um, he was strong enough to get me into my chart, which is interesting because one of the nurses said, you don't get that until after discharge. And I said, no, because I take care of senior citizens. You get it real time. I need, we, need, we need it. And he was able, actually able to call me and help me do that. And so I had, I had a team of people looking at his charts like every day. But anyway, back to the day two when it was in there, I got hit, my phone was ringing, it was Rob. And my mom and sister were with me. I said, oh, it's Rob, it's Rob. So we, we answered it and it, was, uh, it wasn't Rob, it was a doctor. And he was literally yelling at me that my husband needed to be put on a ventilator. And, if, and, and I said, no, he doesn't need a ventilator. His oxygen went from 70 to 90, 96 actually. And uh, they said, and, and then he just kept on, he said, uh, if you don't, if your husband doesn't get put on a ventilator, he's going to die. Do you want your husband to die? And he was talking to me like that in front of my mom, my sister, and Rob. I mean, since when do you talk like that in front of the patient? It's just so weird. And I will say that it's not a one-off story because I've taught, I've met so many, probably hundreds of people that had the same exact story, same exact exact script. So I have a piece of paper back there that's free. It's called Script of Death. And I'm telling you right now, every single story is the same. So I want to know who wrote the script and how did they deliver it to the hospitals. That's the one thing I want. I think they should be held accountable. And they should show us how many people in that hospital that was not died of whatever. And um, so that's one thing that I'm praying for because I believe we have the right to know. There's so much detail in the book. It's not a sob story. It is a, uh, it's a case study is what it is. And it's... When the doctor yelled at me that hateful and that mean, I decided, you know what, I'm going to record every phone call from this moment on so that I can share it with Rob and show him how crazy it, how crazy it was. Because he had been, you know, Rob had been standing on the mountain yelling at people saying, you know, the churches are shutting down, wake up. You know, he was, he was, he was not a whistleblower. He was screaming at the top of his lungs to people. It even got him locked out of Facebook for two months before his uh, trip and, uh, yeah, so that happened. Okay, I, did, I just wanted to let you know why I decided to record the calls. Because I never thought Rob was going to die. He was healthy. He was the healthiest person I knew. In fact, when he was uh, 50, he had a goal to be in the same shape that he was at 25. And so you can see it on Facebook. He, uh, he showed a picture of him at 25 and then 50. And, I mean, he got a trainer. He was working out twice a week. I mean, he was in the best shape of his life. So I kept believing. And even the, even the day he died... I didn't think I don't I didn't think it was time. I, I thought he could pull through, and I, and we had even had another hospital that was going to take him. And anyway, as you read the book, you you will see my journey. It's 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 a day by day journal. But after and, and I need to thank publicly a couple out there. Um, they're like family, uh, Roberta and Alan. Um, if you're watching, I wouldn't even be here today. I don't know what what I would do without them. They helped me. Uh, literally held my hand through this whole nightmare. Um, she was actually with me at the very end, and um, and I just thank them so much because this is not just a book; it is a case study, and it is. So what I had to do is I had to transcribe thousands of hours of phone calls because I taped everything, the chaplain, the social worker. I mean, it was like a mind game what they were doing to me. I was expecting Rob to write the book. I wasn't going to write a book. I thought he'd live through it, and I'd give him this and say, "Look what I had to go through," and then, you know, then he could write it. But then you know, he dies. 
And, uh, and I will tell you that I prayed, and uh, you can ask my son. I mean, he, everybody were like, no way is, is the father going to allow Rob to die like this. No way. I mean, he was the one warning people, you know. But we didn't know that our hospital, our local hospital down the street, had turned into a kill shelter. We didn't know that. And so, anyway, um, he dies. And it's, it's really um, disappointing and... and uh, even though I will say, and part of the, the message of the kingdom is doing the things that Yeshua did. And you know what Yeshua said? He said, just like Rob's Bible with the green and the orange, it always went together. So when he died, I, 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 I literally said, uh, I forgive you, but get out. And they got out. They were like all in the room. So they got out. I closed the curtain. And... Uh, me and Roberta and eventually my mom and sister came and we were praying for God to raise him because you know that's what we're supposed to do I, I don't know what church teaches that but I, I, I went to a little small church in Fort Worth Texas and they taught us how to pray like that and so I said well we're gonna have to do it let's get let's get him up so we uh, we prayed over him and I kept thinking you know I had prayed whatever will bring you more glory I'm okay with it so I was thinking well that'd be pretty that'd be pretty cool you know to see him get up and uh, what well, man, an amazing testimony to that. And then, and then also he could tell us, you know, what they did to him because in the records, and it's all detailed. There's nothing left out. Um, they tied him down. They made him do a BiPAP. They, uh, they starved him. And this is all part of that script that I'm talking about. And so before you leave, there's plenty. There's a whole stack of them back there. Um, I'm just praying that uh, it can get into the right hands. So one other little inside story is. Before we started praying for him to be raised, uh, a friend of mine, who I thought was a really close friend, she cornered me in my laundry room, and she said, why would God raise Rob? And I was like, I, I felt like I had been slapped in the face, first of all. I said, well, first of all, you need to leave because uh, your, your lack of faith could hinder our faith. So I had her leave. And I, I felt like, and I, I, it just stunned me, you know, and I was like, who better, you know? Um, we're supposed to we're supposed to do these things. I mean, read it. It's over and over again. So I'm going to challenge you guys, and, and that's one of the other things is Rob took truth wherever it took him. It caused him a lot of turmoil, a lot of pain, a lot of tears, a lot of uh, feeling rejected and spit on. And yeah, I mean, he went through a lot, and but he kept on because he said it says what it says. That's what the father told him. It says what it. I see. The father literally told him when he was battling with whether or not to say it or not, he said, look, I said what I said. You can believe it or not. And I told him, well, if it says it in Scripture, we, we believe it. And so then he started coming, you know, he started being public that what he believed in. And we lost so many uh, friendships uh, of people in the church, and it was really sad that they would, you know, turn their back on you for something that's literally in Scripture. And, um, and so I was going to open it up with, I'm going to take you to one more level of taking the Bible literally because that's what this message is kind of about. And um, it's a little bit out there, but I, I just I felt like this is, this is what I was supposed to share. So we got his body in our house, and we prayed over him for three days. And uh, my mom and Roberta, they were standing there with me. We had a few other, we had a couple of guys, and um, we had handful of people and we were praying and believing praying and believing and and uh but then i had to give him i had to go, I had to let him go because he had to be buried and it was hard to say you know let you know that's the next level and so the next day i actually that night when they took him i had a, a um, my friend roberta had a really close friend that said i want to pray for sheila and i and i said okay so we went upstairs, me and my mom and sister, and we were all huddled together. And there was a, a lady on the other end, and she gave a prayer over me. And she said, she said, I see immense love, and I see, I see words like, you can do it. And I thought, do what, live? Because, I mean, I was devastated. And then she said, your sword is your pen. And she said, I see light beams, light beams, light beams. I didn't know what that meant, but then looking at the flower that he sent me on, on the day he asked me to marry him, it said, our future is bright, so that kind of tied, that's what I saw the connection there earlier today, but um, so this prayer was prayed over me, and, and, and it rings in my ear, and I'm, I'm thinking, okay, you know, and then we go to the 
cemetery and we have to bury him. And um, I took a few pictures of somebody blowing the shofar over it and, and we were believing. I mean, we were believing. And um, I took pictures and videos, uh, you know, a handful. And then um, I'm trying not to get off track here, but uh, my mom wanted to get there before we did. So she got there by two hours before we did and then we got there and then we just did our prayer. We stayed for several hours, you know, just believing. And, um, and then we had to go. So we left. And then a couple weeks pass, and I'm looking at my mom's phone, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, did you see what was in that picture? She said, no. I said, oh, my gosh, Mom, there's a light beam in your picture. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, that is amazing. Let me look at mine. Let me look at, my, let me look at the pictures I took. Maybe I have some. So I took all my pictures had light beams, every single one of them. And even the video has a light beam. Now, Rob was real, like, skeptical about people that take pictures and it's dust and he would say that's not an orb that's you know whatever so i'm hoping that's not what it is but anyway um i'm gonna take it as prophetic and this is a light beam and maybe 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 he's putting his little foot his little toe down say say bye or hi or whatever because you know our bodies are light beings we lost that you know during the fall and then here's one of them and it's also in the video and i don't know how photography works but for it to be in the pictures and the video and my mom's it gave me a little bit of comfort, you know? But I, I didn't quite know what, what, what was to come next. So, and like I said, Alan and Roberta, they just, they really, really helped me through this because, you know, Rob did everything. I mean, I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to insurance and, and you know, planning a funeral. I mean, all this stuff is so much. I mean, he did, he did everything, everything. Car, the cars and everything. And so they really helped me. And uh, I asked Roberta, I said, you know, I'd like to go through the, the medical record, because I, I, I got the whole entire big 5,000 page record. And I said, I wanna, because I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna see, I wanna understand what they did to him. And so she said, okay, I'll help you. So we went through it, and I'm talking to like all-nighters. I mean, we spent hours and hours, like thousands of hours, just on the summary. This isn't even my book, this is a summary before my book. And our, our thought was, if we could get the understanding, maybe we could find an attorney to take it. Because it was definitely murder. It was definitely premeditated murder because they got paid so much money. And that's all in the book, too. My book has laws that they broke. Uh, it has uh, charts. And it has uh, how much oxygen they were giving him, which was way more than he needed. Uh, the, the damage they did to him from a BiPAP that was contraindicated because he had a pneumomediastinum. And we also hired a medical expert witness who gave nine causes of action uh, that, that killed him. Now, Rob is a face of millions, I really believe. And I think it's 1.2 million Americans died the same way. And um, so he's the face of many. And so I made the, not, the, the names of the doctors and social workers. I gave them pseudonyms, that, and I will admit they're not very nice. But I have Dr. Killer and Nurse Malicious, and they're all like that. So, because I want people to be able to relate to it, because they had a doctor dead end. They had a, a Nurse Malicious. I mean, really, this was barbaric. I mean, I even yelled once, what country is this? And I kept saying, show me in writing where, where it says I can't see my husband. And so, anyway, so Roberta helps me write this summary. And then we call a few attorneys, and... They're like, no, I mean, it's like the plague, you know, they, they, they won't look at it because they know they have immunity. The doctors are protected and they also, they're not going to make any money on it because I think it's capped at 250 for malpractice. So I said, you know what? Forget, forget, forget that. I'm going to do what Rob did. I'm going to, I'm going to write a book. So I asked Roberta, will you help me write the book? She, she said, I'm going to pray about it. And so she did. And at one point she said, no, she couldn't. But one day, and her husband was with her at my house, they lived like right down the street. She said, I, I think I have it. We can write it like you are the jury because public opinion matters. And that's what Rob did. Rob wrote books. He would do blogs and then he would collect all the information and write a book. So I took his lead on it. And so this book has taken a year and a half of my life. And so what I had to do first was, and I mean, it was excruciating to do this, but I had to listen to all those phone calls and I had to transcribe them. And so I would transcribe them and then I'd give them to Roberta and then she'd write it into a dialogue. And then from there, they would go to her husband, Alan, and then he would clean it up and we'd, we kind of, I mean, I'm telling you, it was like 11, 12 hour days. It was a lot of work and I thanked them so much. I could never have written this by myself. 
and he's very analytical and you know with numbers and 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 you know just making sure it all lines up this is fact only this is not feelings this is this is dialogue from the mouths of the doctors themselves it's not anything made up and hopefully if somebody is bold enough to take this case we already have the case already done all they need are the the, the, the uh, audio files themselves I think that that you know it's already done so so uh, we start writing the book it takes a long time the lady that told me why would God rob, uh, raise Rob you know that that story well I remembered a scripture that said when I come back will there be faith in the earth I remembered that scripture because you know and I, I couldn't remember where it was so uh, after his death and after all this I started I went into the Bible and I was like and I, I was like where is that and so I, I was looking found it in Luke Luke 18 so I the the name of the title of that chapter is guess what persistent widow it's a story about a persistent widow now I didn't even consider myself a widow at this time because it was so fresh but I think it was a father showing me that he has something better he had something great he had something way bigger than I had ever imagined so I held on to that and and I encourage all of you to read that story because this widow was on and on and on this judge it even says the judge was ungodly and um, and not just but because of this nagging widow he did whatever it was that she needed to be done and so I am the persistent widow just so you know and I'm not I'm gonna keep on whatever that may look like until I get answers until <laughs> thank you and so the, 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 the prayer that with the light beams, you know, the I can do it, um, I think that was the book, to finish the book. And, and I, I did, I felt a big weight off my shoulders uh, when I did the book. And um, does anybody in here know about Rob's prayer initiative at 444? So he did that before he went on his trip. I mean, because when this whole COVID thing happened, he was like, um, we got to do something, man. You know, we need, to, we need to come together as a people and pray because we can turn this around if we just humble ourselves, seek him and pray. So he was calling all people to pray at 444 in the morning or 444 at night. And I'm telling you that because, and you know, if you've ever edited a book, you have to go through many cycles of edits and edits and edits and edits. And so when we, when we thought that we were completely finished, Alan converted it from Word into a, a PDF because that's what you have to upload I, it's on Amazon so um, he texted me he, he and he, sh he took a screen capture guess how many pages that book was 444 I couldn't make that happen if I tried I think it was kind of for him more than it was for me now I will say the book itself because that because that word document had extra blank pages it automatically does it I don't know but either way I mean wow for, for, that's a kiss from the father too and and showing me confirmation because if you knew Rob or you ever heard him speak he prayed for that he prayed father show me a tangible you show me something that's you that I can't deny and then he and the father would do it and then he'd ask for another one and then he'd do it and then he'd ask for another one I mean he was a typical man you know so um, but we're helpers we're helpers he called me the queen of favor because anytime I prayed it seemed like I would get my answered prayer and so um, you know we can we completed I guess we completed each other or whatever um, so I got that persistent widow verse and I started just believing and I had several women believing even though he was buried you know but it says in the end days or actually I'm sorry it says when 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 Yeshua rose from the dead that the graves are opened I don't know what that looks like there's not really there, there are no details I called Zen and I'm like are there any stories that talk about somebody being raised after they're buried and he and he actually said yes and I've yet to find it but I, that was encouraging to me and so um, I say this because tomorrow's Pentecost and I'm not saying it's going to happen but I'm saying I'm having faith that it could happen because if, if he didn't want to come back I would be fine with that but if the father told him that I have a job for you he would be here in a second because he loved all of you and it, 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 the, the, the people the people he wanted he had a prayer that was so precious he wanted to lead the last person before the end to Yeshua that was his prayer and I don't know anybody that prays like that but he had a really uh, evangelistic heart and he really gave people a chance to um, 
torture him, not, not really, but he gave people a chance to work through their level of understanding because we all are in different seasons and you have to, you have to give them a time to catch up to where you are. And so, uh, and he would do it for hours. I mean, he, he was on the computer from like all day, 12 hours. And I'm like, you need to get up, you know, and quit feeding the brain of the AI, you know, and even though it does need some good stuff too. But, um, but he did, he took the time to answer the questions. And because he did it so much, and he did it over and over, and every question that could be asked was asked, and he answered it because the, the Bible, or I like to call them the, the scriptures, was his compass for truth. And because he kept on explaining it, he got better at it. And, he, and, and then he just he knew it like this. Like everything he did, he, he memorized pretty much. I wish I had that gift. I, I don't. And I'm also nonlinear, so it, it, I miss him because every now and then I'm like, oh, man, Robin know that. Oh, man, Robin know that. But... um. But we're getting through it. We're getting through it. And um, I just want to say I, I'm hoping that you could help me get the book out to the masses. I truly believe that it's not just a book. It's a case study. It is, a, it is the evidence of what they did to 1.2 million people is what I'm believing. I mean, what I, what I heard with the numbers. And so there are several things that you can do. Um, I want to also thank my son. He, he, he's an introvert. So for him to come to me and say, Mom, I'm gonna, I want to I wanna do a, I want to keep Rob's legacy alive. I said, okay. And so um, Jake and Sierra came through town. They were actually there through the whole praying over his body and stuff. And it's amazing to have people that did believe because a lot of people were calling saying, don't give her false hope and all that. It was my idea. I'm like, give it a chance, you know. Don't protect me. Just get out of here, you know. And so... Um, that was a really beautiful time too, but uh, let's see, where was I? Um, I be okay, so I believe Rob was especially targeted because he was unvaccinated. And anybody I ask, I have not yet found one person who was vaccinated. So I think that number needs to be given to us as well. Even the consent forms were not signed. And, and um, my son had a big problem with that. So we got the, we got the record again in December just in December in uh, 2020, 2022. And they gave us another record. They kind of messed with us a little bit because we got home and the CD was blank. So we went back and uh, we got another record. It had a few extra pages and we looked through it. And then with a lot of back and forth, we got three documents that were kind of like admissions, you know, uh, uh, whatever the HIPAA thing is, and then something else. And it had a little squiggly on it, like a signature and I was like and that's not my signature and I know it's not Rob's signature I don't know what this is and my son said well it says there's a witness right here and he pointed to her name and I said oh I've got a great idea we got you know let's go up there just nonchalantly and ask if she works if she's working today and so we did and we went up there and we found her and so we sat down with her and we told her you know that my husband was in the hospital I just wanted to know you know what what this paper was like what's this word because it's not my signature and it's not my husband's and that's in the book it's like at the very end the last like uh, six pages all of this is in the book and um, I think that's fraud I think I'm not a hundred percent I'm not an attorney but I think that's fraud and and they did it really weird like they they circled the word spouse but they put the word verbal and then they had there's another place that says if you are not the person you know the patient sign your name and an address and that was blank so it was it was kind of like a hodgepodge of answers and uh it, it really bothered me and so we we went up there to confront it and um they said well he probably we probably called him because he was in isolation to see and then you know and then we would have put verbal and that we normally it's our procedure to uh, record it and i said well i need that i need to hear my husband's voice saying yes because he wasn't going to do it he told me trying everything they can to get me to get on a ventilator. I'm dead if I do. So he wasn't ever going to do it. In fact, he had a wristband that said DNI, do not intubate. And I want to know someday who took that off of his wrist because I talked to him that morning. I talked to him that morning. And so um, I can't live in the past, though. I can't, you know, because if he had told me to come get him, I would have I bust the door down. I would I would literally bust the door down. I was breaking stuff at my house because I was so mad I couldn't get in there. But... Um, this for a purpose. There's destiny. Remember that? Or density. Um, 
So I want to let you know the, the reason why this book is special, okay? It's a, it's a true crime docudrama. It's a legal brief. It's um, as a body of evidence. And like I said, um, we hired a medical expert that put their analysis in there that has that nine causes of action. Uh, and it's also a complete day-by-day -day chronological story of our 40-day nightmare. Now, I say nightmare, it was a total nightmare, but the 40 days, I, I, I receive that as something from the Father because 40 days, I mean, really? I mean, they were, I mean and when you see how, how many drugs they were giving him, it's a miracle he lived through 40 days. And I couldn't get in there for 21 days, and, and I, I'm sad because I don't know what they did to him. I don't know what they did to him. When I would call, because I had all the calls recorded, you can hear how rude they are and how, do you even know what that means? And I'm like, yes, I do know what it means. And I think I can get my husband's vitals twice a day. You know, I mean, just real hateful. And they, they did this to everybody. And, uh, it, you know, he, Rob said, there are more of us than there are of them. And that's why the book is important, because I need you. I need all of you. And the, we need to get this message out to the masses. And I don't think there's a book like this. I mean, this is a case study on a loved person that's a face of thousands with detail that is n nobody has seen and some people may think their loved one died of whatever covid and this book will show you no they didn't they died of paralytics and sedatives and drugs that are going to shut your kidneys down and all this kind of stuff so there was so much done wrong to him um and it's so detailed in the book i've been doing interviews um and and so my website is the protocol that kills and I've been, this is way outside of my comfort zone too, but um, they get easier. Like Rob always told me, you're only good at what you practice. So we've done six and they're, they're all on my website. And I'm trying to see how to slide up. Well, this is just the video. But anyway, if you go to the menu, you'll see interviews. So if you're interested in more of those, or you want to know a little bit more about the book, then just um, go there and look at the interviews. And each one is different and it's different people. Because see, Rob knew all these leaders. He knew, he knew all these other teachers. And so that's one thing I, I was going to ask you. My son and I can only do so much. You know, we are not social media experts. I mean, he's, my son has taught me a great deal, but we need help. We need help getting the word out. So that's what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to please, you know, get the book, share it with your family and friends, and also um, give it to doctors, attorneys, anybody that will listen or somebody you're trying to convince that, there's a, a genocide happening in hospitals. Um, also, my son created a channel to honor Rob on Fridays at 444, every Friday, and we're in the chat, so it's like a little community. I welcome all of you there, and as this develops, because I don't know what the end is going to look like, but I know it's not, it's not over yet. And, yeah, thank you. And the enemy, I know his time is short. That's why he's ramping everything up. But we're going to be we're going to be creating a movement of freedom, a movement of truth, and I really believe that's what this book is, you know, because Rob was on a quest for truth. So this was a tragic thing that happened, but Rob took truth wherever it took him, and he was unashamed. So I feel like this. That's why I felt so obligated to write the book. It's because I wanted. I wanted. I know if the roles were ver reversed, he would do this, but his final quest for truth and then in his death but it was 40 days and then he went to the Paris he went to the promised land so that's kind of poetic in, in its own way but I'm going to read you a few other things that you can do if you're listening to the show online um, or if you get online and watch different things on uh, YouTube or, or not well they ban most things but anywhere you do and you see a group of people post the link and also, if you, if you have the time, even if you don't want to leave a review, if you just put a star, five star, it, it'll push it to more people. It actually, within the first 48 hours, uh, was, not, was, was the best seller for medical ethics category. I was blown away. Above even the uh, Dr. Fauci book. So it's gotten quite a bit of, yeah, thank you. One other little quick detail, too, is in April, I think we released it on the 12th of April or something, but they show you how many you sell each uh, month. Guess how many we sold in April? 444. And there's another part of that story that you, would, it, you, you can't make it up. I mean, it's just so, it's so Rob. I mean, he, he, he lived for those encounters, and because of his example, 
I, I live for those examples. And anybody who wants to be tapped into his frequency, he wants to speak to you that way too. It's amazing. It's an amazing walk. Let's see how much time I have. This, this is making me nervous, that clock. I'm running out of time. I wanted to read one more verse. Um, so Luke 18, 8, it says justice comes quickly. So I don't know how that looks, but if you have any way to help us get the word out into the right hands, I thank you. Or if you want to give a, pre, a, a review, uh, just go to the website. It's all on the website, theprotocolthatkills.com. The Persistent Widow, I will be the Persistent Widow. It says justice comes quickly. But our Father is just and loving. That's, so we have a better, ju we, we have a better judge than this, than this uh, Persistent Widow. So I went to a little church in um, Fort Worth, like I said, when Jeremiah was little. And uh, I just ran to, you know, I wanted to learn more about the Bible. I didn't understand it. But it was, it was a little church called Romans 8. So I just want to read this because I feel like this is where we are today. And it's, for the creation er eagerly waits with anticipation for God's sons to be revealed. For the creation was subject, subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in the hope that the creation itself will, be, will also be set free from the bondage of corruption into the glorious freedom of God's children. And I butchered that because I missed the, the most important part. Let me do it again. Um, Okay, so for the creation, it's eagerly waiting, because, you know, they're really messing up, the, you know, the ecosystem that the Father created for life. They're really messing that up. They've been doing it for years. And so it, it's also crying out. And so I said, it says, for the creation eagerly waits with anticipation for Yahuwah's sons to be revealed. That's us. And I don't know very many churches that are teaching this. I mean, we, we need to know. I mean, he said, when I come back, will I find faith? Well, yes, I want to believe. I don't know what that means. Tomorrow's Pentecost. But I, I would be delighted if he came back because I don't even know how to do the calendar. It's, it's a whole mess. He could get us all on track and say what the firmament feels like. <laughs> Not to mention his little uh, talks I'm sure he's had with Abraham and Paul. And telling Paul, you could have wrote that a little better because it's really confusing. <laughs> So I, I, I have a little bit of joy just thinking about those things because I know he's not dead. He's more alive than we are. And he wanted to be in the game in the end. He said that many, many times to me. I want to be in the game when in the end. And he, and he prayed that. So, I mean, I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm just saying I'm a persistent widow, whatever that looks like, justice, or for him to, be a, to come back, or, or for other people that, you know, I, I don't know what these end days look like, but I know that we need something. We need, we need a kickstart. We need a... Start believing. I mean, I, you don't know. I don't, I don't understand Christians that don't pray for sick people or raising the dead. I mean, it says it over and over and over. Then you see the kingdom is at hand, and you see him raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out demons. Why aren't we doing that? I don't know. But he wants to know, will he find faith? And Rob believed that too. And that's why I showed you the wedding stuff. It's because his heart... That's how our whole relationship started, was believing that there was more to this um, experience, this Christian experience, than what, we, than what we had been given. It was so stale and so boring, and you know, so we were pursuing the kingdom, we were pursuing the greater relationship that's promised. And now we're living, you know, 14 years later, and I wanted you to get a taste of where we were then, and then the Torah, and then the truth. You know, we get the spirit, and then the truth, and that was a whole nother level and a blessing. But I want to believe for even a greater blessing. And I want to believe for the body of Yeshua to start believing. To start, we need to be, it says to occupy until he comes. Well, occupy is not just to sit around and exist. No, occupy is a military term. It means to take over. So I want to encourage each one of you to, uh, don't be on the defensive. Be on the offense. They should be afraid of us, not, not the other way around. And so in saying that, because I'm running out of time, I wanted to say there's another thing that you can do to protect your family. And I, I learned this after we published the book, or I would have put it in the book. But there's a few people, um, it's kind of interesting. Their website is Protocol Kills. 
And my book is The Protocol That Kills. So when I was looking for the domain, I found their website and I got to know them a little bit. They have fi found a way to, to help people stay alive if, God forbid, they go to the hospital for a broken arm or whatever. Because as soon as you go, you know you're not going to have, you know, the same thing that I experienced. I'm sure it's not going to stop. But it's a document that you, um, so on, on my website, The Protocol That Kills, if you go to my resources, you will see those forms and those directions. And I encourage each one of you, you never know what could happen. Just have them in your glove box and, and with a loved one for the children, for, for everybody, because we need to protect ourselves to stay alive. So that's, that's one thing I wanted to share. And then let me go to my list real quick, and then I'll play the, have a promo. If you have anybody in the, in the, uh, the, that influences people, like radio show hosts or whatever, if you have connections like that, I'm asking you to please plant that seed or you know, let me know and I'll send them a complimentary book. Um, I've already sent it to quite a few, but um, it's hard to find, it's hard to do all of the steps, you know, to get this message out. Even if you have like insights on social media tricks or, you know, we're, we're just living day by day, you know, kind of faking it till you make it. But I really feel like, and somebody prayed over me to, for the team that the fathers created, because we need to be, like I said, on the offense, not the defense. And, and that, those papers are part of that. So I really do encourage all of you to do that. And then also connect with us with Skiba News Nation on Fridays at 444. And then the website, theprotocolthatkills.com. There's tons of information. If you, think, if you have a loved one that, think it's a, that thinks it's a one-off, I encourage you to look at this website because we put a page called Outcries. And I mean, I've met, I don't know, at least five or six people in this room that said they had a loved one that died the same way. And I get that everywhere I go. And so um, I encourage you to look there. You can also leave an outcry or you can, um, you can communicate with me through there. There's uh, Alan's so awesome. He made it easy where you could um, go to the interview page. And if you want to, you know, set an interview up, you can go there and just, you know, send a message there. Let me make sure I got everything else. Um, so first, I got a few seconds. Um, I want to say prayer is the most important thing, and, I, and that, I'm taking Rob's lead on that because he thought if we all pray, we could hold it back a little bit. Um, I don't know; it's ramping up. So I know either way, I'm going to see her, I'm going to see him sooner than later. But uh, I encourage you, as things you know, it says, as you see the day approaching, don't don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. So stay connected to your family. That's one thing we didn't do. That's why what happened. Part of the reason and that was our fault because we were he was a workaholic and he was in an island you know and I didn't know who to call so that that's another reason why the father probably says that so I think that's good so I'll go ahead and play the promo did you know that a government incentivized hospital protocol has led to the deaths of untold numbers of unsuspecting people the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons noted we now see government dictated medical care at its worst in our history since the federal government mandated these ineffective and dangerous treatments and then created financial incentives for hospitals and doctors to use only those approved and paid for approaches. The book, The Protocol That Kills, exposes the lethal regimen adopted by hospitals to maximize profits at the expense of patients' lives. This exhaustive expose provides a first-hand account of the protocol in action as it was invoked on an otherwise strong and healthy 52-year-old Rob Skiba who was diagnosed with a viral infection by the admitting hospital. Within 40 days, this valiant Army veteran who had sworn to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, had fallen at the hands of a government-incentivized domestic enemy. This over 400-page true crime story uncovers every aspect of this lethal protocol in action despite the protest of Rob Skiba and his wife. It includes disheartening text messages from Rob, who was locked away from his wife because she was forbidden to enter the hospital in the name of the protocol. Lawfully recorded detailed conversations his wife had with doctors, therapists, nurses, and hospital staff. Numerous pages extracted from the over 5,000 page hospital record that exposed the protocol that led to his tragic death. The testimony of a medical expert who provided his detailed analysis of the case. Invaluable and timely insights of a legal counsel who provides the story behind the story. 
by providing crucial details and evidence, along with over 100 citations from clinical studies, medical journals, federal regulations, and relevant books and articles that prove Rob did not die of natural causes, but due to the perpetrator's insistence that he follow the mandated and inhumane protocol that kills. As Richard Bartlett, MD, says, this book shares a wealth of critical insights that will greatly aid in preventing future needless losses of life. The purpose of this book is to sound an alarm of a clear and present danger, as this lethal protocol is still being used against patients in hospitals all across America, and to provide you with essential insights that can help save your life or the life of someone you love. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. Get a copy today at theprotocolthatkills.com. Um, I think this is on behalf of everyone. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. You're alive. Thank you. And I think that you're definitely the person to take it on. So whatever we can do to help, we're grateful to do it. But thank you. The thank persistent you so widow much. got justice quickly, and I want to join in agreement in prayer because enough is enough. Amen. Rob said that too. There are more of us than there are of them, and I don't know how that looks, but he does. So let's join together. I don't know how it's going to happen. You know, the Nuremberg trials were 75 year anniversary was last year, but nobody was talking about it. I had to find it online from a Holocaust survivor who republished it kind of like Zen. And I was so thankful because I read through it. And that's, I mean, they broke every single rule in there. And the reason why is because they have an agenda. It's a government incentivized protocol that is designed to kill and it's killing a lot of people and now there, we have other problems too but they've been killing people in the medical system for years this just gave them a blank check you know pretty much you know Sheila two and a half years ago we prayed at the Georgia Guidestones and they've that. fallen down so everybody stand up I think it was Rob that kicked it down that's what I think I don't know Let's join hands in whatever way you want to do that. You can circle or let's, let's honor Sheila with that prayer. Pray with all your heart. Oh, Father God, Father Yah, we honor you. We give you thanks and praise for this time together to honor Rob and uh, thank you for taking him into your arms and comforting him in the most beautiful way. This world has fallen and we're still here and we still have to carry on. And so we wanna be your warriors for truth and light and promises that you've given us. So help us, Father, to come together with united hearts to honor Rob and the Skiba family, his mother and father and all of the faithful ones Sheila, strengthen her in her work. And uh, we just pray that we could hold back the evil and the madness that has overcome this country. It is Babylon here. It's Egypt. Keep us pure. Strengthen us in our love, because we will be known by our love. The love that you gave us, we can only love it because you first loved us. So, Father, just help us in this. We plea, we pray, and we ask with all our hearts. I think you can just keep the prayer going, everyone, please, as we just go throughout this weekend and throughout just our lives. Just let, Let's just keep this prayer going. Yeah. Four, four, I mean, some people set their alarm at 444, four, four, and then just if we can unite our prayers and our hearts, each one of you deserves justice for your grandmother, for your uncle, for your brother, for your sister. I mean, this is this this enough is enough. We need to we need to stand strong. If we don't stand strong together, we're going to end up dying alone. And I know that there's got to be a silver lining. And you know, Rob had such a authentic personality. I think that he really connected. I mean, everybody that's talked to me tonight, it feels like family. I mean, I, I you, you know your your tears are real and it's like that's how he touched people 
So I know he's the face of, of many, but I think maybe, maybe this unity in this love for him maybe can help get it out there. So, um, oh, I forgot to say too, there's a hard cover and a soft cover, and I'm going to throw in a, a searchable uh, PDF on a thumb drive to go with it, because sometimes you might want to search a word and it will make it easier. And so there's also, I'm sorry, there's one other thing um, that I, I did. So Rob would had these DVD ROMs. You know, they don't make computers with CD players anymore, which is so annoying. So he was starting to convert things, and so he made these DVD ROMs, and which is like the six videos, and then he did the Yahuwah Triangle, which is like a whole bunch of workbooks, timelines, and, and Babylon Rising, everything. And then there was the Ephraim Awakening, and it has like a, a whole year's worth of virtual house church. And then Testing the Globe, which I have to fix the book on Amazon because it needs something's wrong with it. But anyway, I took all of these and one more that I forgot to bring, and I did something called the Rob Skiba Legacy Pack. And I, and I oh, put wow. it on a thumb drive. Oh. Because computers are not shipping with uh, CD players. It's on a little thumb drive. And I reduced the price. Um, I reduced it to 222. I, I didn't, my mom was like, well, they, you know, I, we kind of went back and forth. But anyway, this is Rob Skiba's life legacy yeah. research. So I've made it half price. And, um, you know, who knows if we can't get on the internet. You know, you, you have it right here. So I encourage you to look, look at this as well. And then Jeremiah's book, this is the sweet, sweeter story to read first. This is the man that nobody knew except us. But Jeremiah, it's a sweet story about uh, adoption. It really helped Rob understand the Ephraim awakening. So, and it's a lot of pictures. It was like therapy for me to do this one first because I had to remember the good times, which I needed to because I was in a dark place. So I encourage all of you to read this one first and then this one. And, and like I said, if you, you know, want to send it to somebody and you have access to somebody like Glenn Beck or whoever, I, I'd be, I would love to send a complimentary book or, you know, just any advice, any advice, any connections or, you know, let's do it for Rob. Let's do it for all those that died the same way. Because he's at the throne saying, how long? How long, oh Lord, how long is this going to go on? He wanted to see justice in this life. Every time he saw a chemtrail, he was so mad because he made him sneeze and cough and stuff. And he said, you know, I think one day he just did a, a gun and like did that. And then, he, and then the thing disappeared. And he goes, oh, wow, I think that might work. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but anyway. Thank you. She and Rob loved this man. Rob well, loved him. He really did. Yeah, been Rob to us just that when I came, I grew up in church. And the first time I knew a man that won't prove. Even the dark, the quest for truth, the 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 quest for truth with Doug Hamp is a good one to watch if y'all haven't seen it. It's just how years and years, just a thousand miles away. This is. My family, you are my sister, you my mother, you, you are what a woman should be through the end, through the out, the good time, the bad time. You stay with Rob. This is his wedding ring on my index finger because I'm waiting to put it back on him, just if you want to know. I won't take it off. Uh, I thank you. Tomorrow is Pentecost. Tomorrow is Pentecost, okay? I thank you for being that woman, that, that a man, that Rob, do what God called him to do, he to was a gift. touch yeah, he was a everybody. Gift. So I thank you. I thank you. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you for watching that special presentation from Sheila Skiba at the Sacred Word Conference that was down there in Georgia. Now, it's an important thing for her to get the word out. And uh, I've been working with Jeremiah and Sheila since Rob passed away. 
uh, to help progress forward kind of this new direction in their life, um, to warn people of the evils of the medical system. And, and also, you know, it's just a heartfelt presentation from Sheila, one of her first ones that she had done live. And uh, she did an amazing job. And um, I wanted to let you guys know we're streaming this on all of the various channels on Rob's channel, on the VHC, and on Skiba News Nation currently. And generally on, at 2 p.m. on Shabbat, we have Virtual House Church. And so I wanted to come on and invite anybody who is interested in perhaps uh, talking with Jeremiah Skiba or myself uh, on the Virtual House Church Discord server that uh, you can go and join that. And we will be on there for a little while after this video ends here. Um, so uh, we'll be on the Discord channel. Uh, we'll have our moderator sharing the Discord link for Virtual House Church. Um, while we won't do our live stream Virtual House Church episode today because we played this video in place of that, um, we will be on the Discord for further study later on. Usually people gather on there and, and do a read through and, and a study of the tour portion, but I know Jeremiah said he will be on there to answer any questions or discuss with you if you'd like to jump on and see kind of the what the ask what the vision of the ministry that Sheila has is now uh, as Jeremiah has kind of stepped into the role of of con con continuing on that pursuit of truth that his his father uh, inspired in so many people and uh, and I worked with Rob for many years um, doing virtual house church all the way back since 2017 when I was with NIC TV and uh, he had an, a tremendous impact on my life and and I, I th I'm just so blessed to be able to work alongside Sheila and Jeremiah uh, as we continue to spread the news about um, what was done to Rob, but also to c keep alive the, these ministries like the Virtual House Church that have blessed so many people over the years. And so with that said, I, I, I'm Jake Grant, if you're not familiar, and, um, and myself and Jeremiah Skiba will be over on the Virtual House Church Discord after uh this finishes airing so this is my little daughter Aaliyah. say hi Aaliyah. a little awkward <laughs> all right all right shabbat shalom everyone thank you for watching and uh and we will see you guys over on the discord server or next week for virtual house church or on friday for skiba news nation thanks Hello.